Hi, everyone. I think it's time to get started. You guys can unmute yourself and then turn on your um, camera so we can still see each other. Hi, guys. Hello. Hi. Hi. <clears throat> all right. You're all at home? Yes. All right, yep. nice. Safe, healthy. Yes, as far as I know. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Says I like your background. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um. So, I upload um last time's um lecture online. You guys can take a look uh, if you haven't done so. Um. So basically, in the last lecture, we talked about what we'll be um, doing regarding homework, um, and then possibly what we should be doing about our exam too, okay? So for the homework, it's going to be assigned from now on um, on Moodle, and then you guys should submit on Moodle uh, over there. Because um, each time I get images from you guys, it takes me a while to um, compile them into a Word file and then PDF file, and then grade and return back. If you do, um, submit it online, then you actually automatically um, generate a PDF file, um, which will save me save me a lot of time. So if you can do that, um, say that's uh, saving me a time of time. Okay, so let's do it on that way, and then we might be also submitting the um, exam um, later on, on on Moodle as well. So when it comes to the time we will have exam, I'll um create a kind of assignment on that and there's a like say two hour window for you guys to finish the exam and then um turn it back in okay so that's what we'll be doing um from now on um yeah but if you were not um able to attend last time's lecture um check on that video and then um check on what we have talked about. Um, also, we went through, I think we went through the solutions for the exam too, okay? So you guys um, did very well on exam two. Um, so from this point on, we'll um, keep just throwing out like extra bonus, like quizzes, um, and then um, you guys should be good. Um, or most of you guys should be good uh, towards the end of the semester, okay? So um, let's get started on the lecture part here. Also, um, so if you mute yourself, um, then you can unmute yourself anytime if you have question, okay? So um, just whenever you want to ask question or any comments you want to make, um, unmute yourself and then you can um, uh, talk because I'll be putting the PowerPoint in the full screen mode so I wouldn't be able to see if you um, raise your hand. I think it doesn't uh, give me a lot of um, like play any sound or whatever, I could I wouldn't notice. So just unmute yourself and then talk. Okay. Um. So let's see. Let's uh, get started on the lecture part here. Let me share my screen to you guys. <clears throat> All right. And then I'm gonna to put this in full screen mode. <clears throat> Okay, so um, homework number seven is on Moodle. Um, I think I sent you guys this earlier. Um, it's due on Wednesday, okay? So on Wednesday before this class started, uh, you want to submit um, on Moodle, okay? So um, today we'll be looking at um, section 15.4, uh, impact, okay? So, um, after today's class, you should be able to, or that's the goal, um, to understand and analyze the mechanics of impact and then also analyze motion of the bodies um, undergoing and collision, okay? Um, so let's start it with reading quizzes, okay? So again, um, this is uh, will be extra bonus for you guys. So let's do the reading quiz, okay? So. When you want to um, submit your answer, let me see. Um, you will just um, send chat to me privately, okay? So there's option that you can send um, chat 
um, to everyone or to someone just just pick me okay so submit your answer with with the chat if you are on a pc then you move your cursor i think to the top of the screen you pop up the menu bar and then there's more options you click on more it will uh, bring up the chat uh, feature if you are on your mobile device um, i think it's it's the button you can move um, to the bottom of the screen and it will bring up the menu bar okay All right, so everybody sent your responses. Okay, so um, let's take a look here together, okay? So this one says, the first one says, when the motion of one or both of the particles is at an angle to the line of impact, the impact is said to be, okay? So if there's an angle, then the impact is said to be obliquer impact, okay? So um, in this section, we'll be talking about two um, types of impacts, the central impact and obliquer impact, okay? The central impact, that means the center of mass um, they are lined up and then the collision happens in that direction. Otherwise, if there's an angle um, with this line of impact, then it's called obliquer uh, impact. So the first one should be B, okay? Um, the second one here, it says the ratio of the restitution impulse to the deformation impulse is called it should be B as well as called restitution coefficient, okay? So this is also defined in the textbook on page 267, if you check on that, okay? It's on page 267, the text there, okay? So the correct answer will be um, <clears throat> B and B, all right? So let me um, switch my screen here. All right, so, so for the reading quiz, 
okay? It's going to be B, and then the second one is also going to be B, okay? So these are the answers to the reading quiz. All right, so for applications, so um, the impact um, or coefficient of restitution is actually um, used to determine the quality of tennis ball, okay? And then it could be used for other applications, for example, um, um, to um, pick up a cherry or like the quality of the cherry or uh, other fruit can be determined by this too. You will get one example here on the current assignment for the homework, okay? Um, so it has to be have, it has to be having a particular coefficient of restitution in order to have a good quality to, to be passed on to consumers, okay? Um, and then also, um, I don't know if any of you guys play um, billiards uh, balls, and what happens is the cue ball will hit one ball and then there's this impact, okay? So um, if there's an angle, then this is an uh, obliquid uh, impact, then you'll, um, you can use this theory to determine uh, or to predict where the, um, the other ball is going to be um, going okay, towards. So that's what we can apply, actually. All right, um, we will just get started, okay? So, um, so for an impact, it happens when two uh, objects, they collide, um, and then this would be happening in a very short time of period, okay? So um, then it will cause large impulsive forces to be exerted between the bodies, okay? So the impulsive forces will be very large, so then you can normally ignore um, the impact of, say, the weight on the two bodies, yeah. okay? I think we have someone else join us. Let me take a look. Oh. Hi, I see Obi coming here. So it looks like it's everyone's on board. Okay, so if you just join right now, um, you just miss the quiz, okay? So make sure next time uh, you join us on time, all right? Let's see. All right, so let's um, continue over here. So, <clears throat> um, so during the impact, um, there's um, some um, terminology here we want to get um, familiar lives with. So the first one um, is the line of impact, okay? This is the line where the center of mass or mass centers of the two objects collides, okay? So then you basically, when they collide, you kind of just connect the center and the centers of the two masses, then that would be the line of impact, okay? Um, in general, um, there are two types of impact. One is called central impact, uh, where the impact occurs when the directions of motion of the two colliding particles are along the line of impact, okay? So um, you can see the figure over here. So A comes in, in this way, B comes in this way, they both come in on the line of impact which connects their center of masses, okay, when that happens. And the other types of impact is called Upright impact, which happens in this way um, in the figure down here. So um, it doesn't have to be like the tube uh, will come at an angle with respect to the line of impact, which goes through the centers, the center of masses there. But it could be just either one or both of them. Okay, so you could have say A is original here, and then B comes with an angle or maybe B is stationary initially, and then A comes with the angle um, with the line of impact. Then, um, or you can have both, both of them coming um, with angles of, um, with respect to line of impact, okay? So, um, any of this situation, ha situation happens, then you have upward impact, okay? So, um, those are two kinds of impacts central impact and obliquid impact, okay? We will take a look at um, the, the first one, the central impact um, more closely here, okay? 
So when the two objects, they collide, okay, um, if this is a central impact, then they come along the line of impact, okay? So you, have, you would have um, A ball comes in with velocity uh, VA, and then B ball comes in with velocity VB, okay? So then they had um, collision like that. So what happens is you can imagine if you have two balls, they collide, okay? If you can play the slow motion, uh, what happens then, what, what's happening here is the two balls will deform, okay, slightly. And um, yeah, if they are not rigid, then they will deform maybe at a, a greater um, uh, extent. But the two here, A and B, they will deform slightly, okay? So during this plot process, okay? So um, then there will be impulse received by ball A, and then there will be also impulse received by ball B, okay? And those two should be um, equal in magnitude, but just um, opposite in direction, okay? So if um, the force is P, then you're doing integration, uh, P with respect to DT, and then ball B will experience minus of that imp impulse, okay? So this is called deformation impulse um, during this um, deformation. And then at some time later, the deformation is going to be having, it's going to be at a maximum, okay? So then you would have a maximum deformation at some point later, all right? After that, let me see, um, I don't think we have this here, but in the textbook, you can um, check on the textbook, page 266. So what happens is when this maximum deformation occurred, then, the balls then will kind of bounce off from one another, okay? So then they will restore their um, shape uh, partially or entirely if there's no permanent deformation happens. So that process is called the restitution process, okay? So in that process, the two balls, they both will receive an impulse called restitution impulse, all right? Which in the text we can see, it's equal to integration of R times DT. R means the um, restitution force each ball will receive. So on A, it will receive a restitution impulse. On B, it will re receive um, another um, restitution impulse, which is exactly the same magnitude as A receives, but just in opposite directions. direction, okay? So, um, the ratio of these two impulse, the um, restitution impulse to the deformation impulse, then it's defined as the um, restitution um, coefficient, okay? So um, we don't have it on the slide, but it's in the textbook, okay? So that's where the definition is coming from, okay? So um, regarding to a particular problem, in most cases, um, you will know the initial velocities of the two particles, okay? And then when they collide, so that happens in a very short time period, you can ignore the um, external forces on, on the system of the two objects, okay? So then you can apply conservation of linear momentum. So you can write the first equation, the conservation of linear momentum like this, okay? So on the left-hand side, this is the summation of momentum from each of the particles from A, object A, um, with one as subscript, that means the initial, okay? With on the right-hand side, it has two as the subscripts, so that means the final um, status. So you have um, momentum from object A, initial, plus momentum from object B, initial, that equals to momentum from object A, uh, final, plus momentum from uh, object B, final, okay? Although this is, um, looks like um, a scalar quantity equation, but we should keep in mind that uh, we are dealing with, when we are talking about momentum, it's actually a um, vector form, all right? Now, uh, the fact that we are writing it as a scalar form is because now this is a central impact, so it happens on one line, so it's one dimension, okay? So then you can use the magnitude for that. All right, <clears throat> so, um, typically, you would know their masses, you would know their initial velocities, 
Now, in the equation here, you can see you still have two unknowns. You have a final velocity of object A, and then you have final velocity of object B, okay? So those two are still unknown. So in order to solve for two unknowns, you would, you would need to have two equations, okay? So we have one equation, then the second equation you would need would be coming from um, the definition of coefficient of restitution, okay? So that's called E. So the coefficient of resistance is called E. It's the ratio of particles relative separation velocity after impact. So you'll be doing the second object final velocity minus the initial um, object's final velocity, okay? Divided by um, the relative approach velocity, which is um, initial velocity of object A minus initial velocity of object B, okay? So this is that. And then this is um, a derivation of this one is showing um, in the textbook, so I will not go through here, um, but you guys can um, check it on page 267, okay? So then um, this is um, the coefficient of restitution E, okay? So typically if you have um, no objects, then you will, um, the E will be given, okay, um, in the problem. So then you will have this as a second equation, all right? So on the numerator, you have the two velocities are uh, unknowns in the denominators, this is, these are two knowns, okay? So you have this as second equation, and the E is a known. So combine this equation with the one on the, last, the previous slide, you can solve for the two unknowns, okay? So that's um, typically what you will be doing to solve for um, the two unknowns of final velocity. Sometimes um, the initial velocities are not necessarily given directly, but you should have uh, enough information to calculate the initial velocities, okay? Like some of the, um, I think um, in your homework problems, there are um, some of the problems like that. You would have to calculate your initial velocities first, okay? But, um, up to this point, you should have enough knowledge to do that, okay? All right. <clears throat> so, um, in general, E would have a value between anything between zero and one, okay? So, when E is equal to one, um, so that means, okay? So that means you have an elastic collision, okay? So. Uh, for those of you who have taken physics one, you know elastic collision means when a collision happens, there's no loss of energy, okay? So you can apply um, actually two conditions. You can apply conservation of linear momentum, and then you can apply the uh, conservation of mechanical energy, okay? Now, um, the other stream is, uh, is, stream is uh, when the E is equal to zero, which means this impact is a plastic impact in which the, there's a maximum loss of the energy, okay? So, uh, but it's not necessary that um, the velocities will go to zero, okay? So when the um, when an impact happens or collision happens, you might have two objects um, stick together, but they still have a non-zero velocity. In that case, um, you can, um, prove that the loss of energy will be maximum, so E will be equal to zero in that case, okay? But still, um, they don't have, uh, they don't necessarily would have zero velocities after the impact, okay? Um, and then more, um, in, more, in general, you would have E anything between um, zero and one, okay? So some typical values are listed over here. If you have a steel ball, hit on a steel ball, then the E is going to be anything between 0.5 to 0.8, okay? Wood on wood will be uh, between 0.4 to 0.6, okay? Glass on glass will have most um, uh, E um, coefficient of restitution between 0.93 and 0.95, okay? And the lead on lead will be between 0.12 to 0.18, okay? <clears throat> All right, um, any questions you guys might have?
But again, if you do, just unmute yourself and, and then speak, okay? All right. If not, then um, let's take a look um, um, these two um, concept quizzes, okay? So um, go ahead and try this uh, by yourself and then you can send me um, your answers um, through the chat option here, okay? All right, I can see most of you guys submit your answers. Uh, let me just wait for a couple of seconds more to see if there's more of the responses from you guys. I don't know if you guys can hear my kids crying. Um, so we, we have a one year old and three year old at home. So sometimes you might hear they crying, but don't worry, my wife is taking care of them, okay? So 
that should be fine. Unless my wife comes to me, then there's a problem. Okay, I guess most of you guys have submitted the answers. So let's take a look um, at least um, two problems one by one. Um, so let me save the chat for right now. Um, so the first one here, it says two balls uh, impact with a coefficient of restitution, restitution as 0.79, can one of the ball leave the impact with a kinetic energy greater than before the impact, okay? So for this one, the answer will be yes, okay? So you can imagine if there are two um, balls, one will be having small mass and then the one, the other one will have a large mass, okay? So you can imagine if the small one has small original velocity, that means it has small, small kinetic energy, okay? But the large one might have larger velocity, that means the large one has larger kinetic energy. So when the two collide in that fashion, with the small one has small velocity, larger one has larger velocity. So it's likely that the small one will be rebounded with larger uh, velocity or, or speed compared to its original speed, okay? So in that case, then the small ball will gain larger um, kinetic energy than before, okay? So that's one of the scenario that, that could be true. So the answer should be yes, okay? So it's possible that happens, okay? Because in the problem, we are not given any information about the masses of the two balls, so then A is possible, okay? So, uh, so that's possible, the question is, uh, can one gain more kinetic energy? So that's possible, okay? So then will be A, okay? Um, on the second one, problem two, um, it says under what condition is the energy lost during the collision uh, be ma maximum, okay? So, um, for um, if we use um, coefficient of restitution, when E is equal to one, then you don't lose any energy, okay? The other stream is when E is equal to zero, okay? So E could be either, um, or E could be anything between um, zero and one, okay? So that's the um, range for E to be possible. But when E is equal to zero, then you lost most, um, your loss of energy is being maximum, okay? So this one will be B, okay? So this is from the definition, all right? So um, with B, um, E equal to zero, then you lost the, um, the most energy will last will occur, okay? Now, if you have any questions, just unmute yourself, okay? And then talk. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at the energy losses. If, how would you calculate the energy losses, okay? So during the equation, um, the energy losses can be calculated. So um, on the equation here, so this is the energy loss, okay? So summation of energy from one to two, the energy change, we should, we should refer to it, uh, it as energy change or energy loss. So then it should be equal to the summation of the kinetic energy final minus the summation of the kinetic energy initial, okay? So you'll be doing for T, it's the kinetic energy will be doing one half MIVI square, okay? So each of the object involved times the initial velocity square gives you the initial um, kinetic energy. And then if you do final, that gives you final velocity, okay? So if you do final kinetic energy summation minus initial kinetic energy summation, that gives you energy lost, okay? So that's how you would calculate it, okay? <clears throat> All right, now what does the um, list loss of energy go? Um, where does it go? So it, um, it can become various forms, okay? It's, it can become heat, it can become energy carried in the sound, okay? Or it can um, come as deformation, local deformation of the materials, okay? So that's where the energy loss is going to. Um, now, when E is equal to zero, we call the collision to be plastic collision. That, uh, when, that's when the energy loss is maximum, okay? And then as I said, um, if that's the case, when that happens, actually, it doesn't necessarily that the 
um, the two um, will have combined and um, energy to be zero okay so um, that's because you can have so what what a common uh, case is we, when you have two collisions say a bullet um, strike on a, a wood block so if the bullet is embedded in the wood block then you will have maximum loss of energy okay so in that case the system will still have certain non-zero energy okay <clears throat> all right so that's um central um impact now let's take a look um uh, up liquid uh, impact where either one or both of the object coming as with an angle to the line of impact okay when that happens then we would actually so this is what we are going to to do we are going to um just imagine that when this happens we are going to look at the problem um two dimensionally okay so we will look at one dimension as the in the line of impact which call x dimension we will look at in the y direction as the um, another second the second dimension okay so the impact also in, happens over there so when the two um, collide okay on each other in the x direction then that's where the forces is going to be um, on so on object a you will see that the force is going to be to the minus x okay and then um the ball b here you are going to see that the uh, impact force is going to be in the uh, positive x direction okay so the forces the two ball receives they are going to be either in the positive x direction or in the y direction okay or in the in the positive or negative y x direction okay there's no force on the two objects on the y direction okay so then in the y direction if we if we resolve the velocity into x and y component because there's no force in y direction on either of the ball so then the y component of the two velocities should remain the same okay so the only um, thing changes um, in the velocity would be the x components of the velocities okay because that's where that direction there's impact forces on um, each of the ball okay <clears throat> So then in that case, um, you can see then um, you can write equations. Uh, again, you can use the um, conservation of momentum. You can write one equation like this, okay? So, and then this is going to be applied just on the x direction, okay? It's because in y direction, there's no change in the velocities. You can, you can still write them, write the equation down, but it doesn't, it's not quite useful because it's simply like the initial momentum in y direction um, is going to be fine equal to final, but initial velocity and final velocity they remain the same, so they just cancel out. So it gives you like zero equal to zero, okay? From that equation, it's not really useful. But the one equation useful is the x component um, equation, okay? So the initial momentum in x plus on the first ball plus the initial momentum in x on the second ball it's going to be equal to the final momentum on the first ball plus the final momentum on the second ball okay <clears throat> and then um, the second equation over here okay again it will be coming from the coefficient of restitution because then if you look at just the x direction impact this is actually the central impact okay so then again we can write this so the second balls final velocity minus the first ball's final velocity divided by um, the initial ball velocity of the first ball minus initial velocity of the second ball and that will give you the restitution coefficient of restitution okay so in these two equations then there will be two unknowns the initial or the final velocity of the uh, ball one and then final velocity of the ball two okay so you have two equations again and then two unknowns you should be able to solve for both of them okay now because the factor that in y direction the components of velocities don't change so that's not a, an unknown okay so those two are still unknowns okay given the original condition okay <clears throat> 
So this will be the two um, in the y direction because um, there's no impact force in the y direction. So then it remains the same velocity initial equal to velocity final on the first ball and then also on the second ball. Okay, so we don't necessarily use those two equations to solve the problem. <laughs> All right. So for procedures for analysis or problem solving, so typically uh, in most problems, um, the initial velocities of the particles um, and then the coefficient of restitution E will be known, okay? And then the final velocity will be the unknowns that you want to determine, okay? Now also in some cases, as, as I mentioned, the initial velocities will be, um, could be calculated by given, um, um, information in the problem stated. Okay, so that's that's um, that's 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 when you have to um, calculate them first. Okay. Now, um, so that's the first thing. Um, read the problem carefully to see which one are knowns, and then um, how can you can you use the information to determine the initial velocities of the particles? Okay. The second is you would have again an x and y axis. Okay. So Typically, x will be the, the line along the line of impact, and then y will be perpendicular to the line of impact. Okay, so that's typically what you have. Um, now you could um, do it other way around because x, y axis could be arbitrary. Okay, it's up to you, but um, um, just keep in mind. Okay, so, um, this is what the textbook is using, so maybe it's better for you to stick with it so you don't get met, uh, messed up. Okay. Um, <clears throat> So, and then for both um, central and oblique impact problems, um, you can use um, two equations to solve for two unknowns, okay? So one would be um, conservation of momentum. So summation of initial momentum should be equal to some um, summation of final momentum, okay? And then use the restitution coefficients, you will have a second equation, all right? <clears throat> And then for applicable uh, impact problems, um, the y directions um, velocities they remain the same. Okay. All right. So we'll take a look at one example, and then um, we should be able should should have time for um, problem solving, uh, group problem solving. Okay. So um, the example here. So um, there's a ball has been thrown at the wall at um, incoming angle of 30 degree, okay? So the impact, you can see the impact will happen in the x direction here, right? When the ball strike on the, on the wall, so there will be normal force on the ball here should be perpendicular to the uh, surface of contact, which is the wall here, so it should be in this direction, okay? So this should be your x direction, you should add, set up that way, and then this should be your y um, direction, okay? Now, because this guy comes in with an angle, so this is an operated um, uh, impact. Now, with the initial 20, 20 meters per second as the initial speed and an angle of 30 degree, you should be able to figure out what's the initial uh, y component of velocity and x component of velocity, okay? Now, it tells you also the um, restitution coefficient is 0.75, then you can use that to um, figure out what's the final velocity of the x, x direction, final velocity of the ball, okay? And then the y component velocity final should be the same as the initial, okay? So that's why you're looking for the velocity of the ball just after the impact. That means you will need the x direction component and also the y direction component, okay? So let's take a look here. <clears throat> Um, look at the solutions here together, okay? So, um, again, switch that, you know, choose x to be horizontal, y to be um, vertical. So, the momentum of the ball should be conserved in the y direction because there's no impact force on the y direction, okay? The impact force is only on the x direction. So then, um, you can figure out the final velocity, um, final, the y component of final velocity should be equal to the initial, okay? So initial will be mvb1 sine theta, or oh, that's the, oh, actually it's using the momentum form, but that's fine because m and m will cancel out, okay? 
So VB2 sine theta, then it's equal to um, 10. Okay, because you are doing sine theta, sine theta will be equal to one or sine 30, sine 30 is one half. VB initial is 10, so then one half times 10 gives you 10. Oh, 20 here, sorry, VB is 20. So one half times 20 will be 10, okay? So, so then this is the Y direction, okay? Final momentum of Y, okay? The so next we'll have to um, solve for the um, final velocity in the X direction, okay? To do that, we can do um, coefficient of restitution, okay? So the object A will be the ball, object B will be the wall, okay? So the wall will not receive any um, final velocity. So the final velocity of the second object will be zero minus the final velocity of the, the initial of the first object, okay? Again, if you are using coefficient restitution, you are referring to the X component of the uh, velocities, okay? So, this is an unknown, but this one is a known. You can figure this one out by doing VB1 um, cosine of 30, okay? So that's that guy, all right? Initial velocity of the wall in the x direction should be zero, okay? So then you can set this up so the 0.75 is equal to this, all this, okay? So then VB2 cosine, so this is the X component of um, the ball's velocity, okay? So X component being this guy, Y component being this guy, okay? X component is 12.99, Y component is 10, all right? So then for the magnitude of the final velocity here for the ball, it's going to be square root of X squared plus Y squared. That gives you 16.4. For the angle theta, you are going to do tangent inverse of y over x, okay? y is 10, x is 13 almost. That gives you 37.6, okay? So again, you use two equations, you solve for two unknowns, okay? <coughs> Anyone has any questions on this one? All right, if not, then let's um, do the attention quiz here. <clears throat> so this one says a particle strikes the smooth surface with a velocity of um, 30 meters per second. If E is equal to 0.8, what would be Vx2, okay? Final uh, velocity.
All right, so I see many of you guys said C as the co correct answer, okay? So initially I thought C was, but um, so this is why I had. So I was going to apply E equals to, I had to apply that one. Um, final velocity of the second object would be the, the flaw here, minus the initial velocity of our X component of the, the ball, okay? And then divided by, the initial velocity x component minus the initial velocity of the, the ground zero, okay? So then I get this guy, so minus vx2 over uh, vx1. I got final velocity x component divided by initial velocity x component, which will be equal to 0 0.8, okay? And then if we are just looking at the magnitude, that will tell me that because this guy over this guy is less than one, so then Vx2 should be less than Vx1, okay? So that's why I thought initially as well, but the, the problem is now it actually didn't set up the way as we um, would do, okay? So it would set up actually the x to be along the impact. So that means normally it would set up that this to be X, but this to be Y, all right? Because this is the line of impact, okay? It would be X and then perpendicular to that would be Y. So if we look at this problem in this case, then the X here is actually the Y and then the Y would be X, okay? So, because normal to the line of impact, there will be no forces on the ball because the force will be perpendicular to the, um, the surface or the force will be along the line of impact, okay? So then normal, this guy, normal direction over here to this line of impact, the velocity shouldn't change, okay? So that means um, X component, of the velocity here will not change because the any impact will be along the y direction here in this problem actually, okay? So then B will be the, in, uh, the correct answer here on this one, okay? So attention quiz B will be the correct answer, okay? Because it tricked us that um, it set up that this is x, this is y, but actually, um, the y here, or the x here is not along the line of impact, so you wouldn't apply this equation here, okay? All right, so B will be the correct answer here. Any questions you guys might have? All right, excellent. So if not, then we'll look at the group problem solving here, right? So um, I think we are running um, almost out of time. So you guys probably wouldn't have time to try it yourself, okay? But I will just briefly go through the solution here, okay? So this one says um, the tennis ball is served horizontally, 7.5 uh, feet high here. And then it strikes the smooth ground at point B here um, with known um, E coefficient of restitution at point eight. Okay. So, and then it says find A and B, uh, VA and VB, the speed of both balls, okay? When um, it's hit by the racket here, and then um, after it strikes the, um, from here, okay? So in here you can see uh, if you divide the motion of the ball into two parts, okay? So one is before the impact, okay? So uh, forget about anything about the impact at point B, then this is a um, projectile motion, okay? With the initial velocity of VA being horizontal, okay? And this is um, the height of the Y, this is the X, okay? So you can set it up that way. Um, let me show you guys um, how would you do this. Then you can figure out the VA first, okay? 
So your setup, uh, when the ball is being striked, okay, this is VA. So then this is the X, this is the Y being at the ball initial strike position as the origin, okay? Now you will go um, a trajectory like that, okay? So if this is zero, your final Y then will be this 7.5, okay? So Y, we can write two equations from the um, X and then also from the Y, okay? So for Y, it's going to be initial Y plus V zero Y T plus one half G T square because we choose um, downward to be positive Y, so then we use positive here, okay? For the X, it's going to be equal to initial X plus V zero X times T. Okay, so two equations here. All right, <clears throat> now initially the ball has horizontal velocity as VA. So then this guy is VA, okay? So these two equations then becomes, so Y will be 7.5 as the final initial is zero plus zero because initial velocity of the ball will be zero, okay? It only has X component, okay? So Y component will be zero times T. And then plus one half G, we are using feet, okay? So we will use 32.2 T square. You know this over, okay? So that's the first equation. The second equation here, will give you x, so 20 equals to VA times T, all right? So you have two equations here with VT being unknown and then also or VA being unknown and then T being unknown, okay? So you can solve for T from the first equation, all right? So first equation will give you T equals to square root of, because we are running out of time, so I'm going to just show you this, 7.5 times 2 over 32.2, .2, okay? So that will tell you that T is going to be equal to 0 0.6825 second, all right? So once you have that T, you plug that T back into the second equation here, you'll be solving for your VA. So VA will be equal to 20 over T, okay? So it'll be 20 over 0.6825, and that will give you the VA to be 29.3 feet per second, okay? So we just solve for VA, all right? <clears throat> now that's nothing to do with the, what we talked about today, okay, the impact. So um, at point B, then that's where the impact happens, okay? So at point B, when the ball strikes point B, right, I'm going to use an, another sheet here, when it strikes at point B, so then it comes as an initial velocity here at point B, bounces back, okay? So now what we need to know is the initial velocity here, uh, when it just strike point B, okay? So that means uh, VB, let's say one, that means initial, and then we are looking for VB two, final, okay? So, the X component of this one, initial velocity, should be still the same, okay, VB X initial should be still the same VA, okay, because in the X component, there's no oscillation, all right? VB Y initial should be equal to the zero initial plus GT, okay? So then you will have this information. T already, we got it, G we have it, so 32.2, multiply by 0 0.68, um, let me see, two five seconds, okay? So you would have that <clears throat> as 21.98 feet per second, okay? This guy was 29.3 feet per second, okay? So the initial components of the velocities, you actually know them, okay? So this is the line of impact, okay? So this is line of impact. So that means in this case, your Vx, okay, will not change because that's the uh, perpendicular to the line of impacts, okay? 
So your VBX2 will be still the 29.3 feet per second, okay? But your VBY2, you can use the um, re coefficient of restitution, okay? So E, you're going to set up the E is equal to um, VBY, the final minus the velocity of the ground will be zero, the Y component, and then the um, zero minus VB zero, or VB Y one, okay? You'll set that up so then you can calculate this guy, okay? I'm going to just tell you the, the final answer here. So that's going to be 15.38, okay? So with the X component final, X component, Y component final, then you can solve for VB final, okay? VB2 being VB final, all right? It's going to be 33.1, which I'm going to post the full solution on the PowerPoint slides later, okay? Any questions you guys have? All right, so if you don't have questions, then uh, we'll stop here today, okay? And again, let me know if you have questions, you can um, talk to me one, one by one, one on one. Just use the link I gave you, uh, gave out to you last week on, like, on the title, like say, Office Hour, okay? okay? So click on that link, it will, it will send me an email, say you are waiting for me, then I can join the meeting to you, all right? So that's it uh, for today. So everyone have a good weekend, keep safe, be safe and healthy, okay? See you next week. Bye.